In our last video, we tackled what to do and consider before you train your amiibo. But now, we're hitting the heart of the matter. How do we mold these plastic figurines into murder machines? Before we get started though, I'd like to make a quick correction. In my last video about amiibo training, I gave this whole spiel about how spirit's attack isn't worth as much as defense. Uh, however, basically as soon as I published that video, the Smash team decided to change that. It's a good change, glad to see that defense and attack are even, but uh, just sort of wish they would have, you know, put it in the patch notes. Regardless, huzzah! Let's get back to turning our amiibo into a murder bot. We will start by understanding what it is we are actually doing when we train an amiibo. Some imagine amiibo training as subtly programming an AI, but that's the wrong way to look at this. We aren't coding Deep Blue to take on Grandmaster chess players. No, what's inside our amiibos is an NFC chip that stores a .bin file that is only 540 bytes large. Notice I said bytes, not gigabytes, not megabytes, bytes, as in eight zeros and ones. That's basically less than the computing power of Apollo 11. So if an amiibo has so little memory, how can we possibly be training it to do anything? Well, this is because you're not programming an AI. Once again, no AI involved. To do that with so little memory would be impossible. The AI is already taken care of. It's in the game thanks to Daddy Sakurai. So, instead of being associated with your AI, your .bin file have certain clusters of bytes that are associated with specific moves, abilities, or traits. These are going to be things like side B, dare, up smash, taunting, jumping, dodging, etc, etc. As you train the amiibo, these sliders are going to move up and down based on their perceived effectiveness and modify the amiibo's behavior. These sliders are overlaid on top of the amiibo's AI that is built into the game. For this reason, some amiibo are going to be boosted by well-programmed AI, while others are going to be held back by AI with odd quirks that interrupt their effectiveness. Amiibo training, therefore, doesn't emphasize complex battle plans, but simple observation of what sliders you want to move up and down to best take advantage of the tools each amiibo have. But how do we move these sliders? Good question. Your amiibo sliders move up the most when the following events occur. Number one, when the amiibo scores a kill with a move. Number two, when the amiibo gets killed by a move that they have. Number three, when the amiibo damages someone with a move. And number four, when the amiibo is damaged by a move that they have. You'll notice number two and number four on this list have the caveat, a move they have. It is for this reason, we recommend that when you train, you focus on mirror matching your amiibo so that they will learn not just from doing unto others, but also by having others do unto them, more specifically you. So now with this in mind, you need to figure out what moves you want to emphasize in your amiibo before you start training. I know it's natural human inclination to just say, I'll just fight it like normal and it should learn, but unless what you're trying to train is a raid boss amiibo designed to fight humans, this approach is flawed. An amiibo's AI is already designed to fight humans and to take advantage of its biggest strength, its ninja-like reaction time. You see, people think of computers as smart, but actually, they're not. Computers are very dumb machines that cannot understand context very well. But they are very dumb very fast. Our amiibo's AI isn't very good at picking up context either. But what they are good at is reacting far quicker than a human could ever hope to. However, what happens when they lose their reaction speed advantage by fighting against another amiibo? See, amiibo vs amiibo fights aren't determined by being able to react quicker. They are all running on the same CPU. No, these battles are won on the back of being able to use moves that abuse an amiibo's inability to understand context. We want to go into our training with a plan on which moves we want to emphasize for our amiibo and when to use them. Once you have determined what moves you want to emphasize, it's time to actually battle your amiibo and to teach it. If you're wondering what stages you should fight your amiibo on, I recommend you fight them on stages that they are most likely to battle on. Most competitive tournaments prefer Final Destination and Battlefield style stages, so that's what I personally train them on. However, if you want to train elsewhere, that's cool. I don't have strong opinions on this. My only recommendation is that if you are using Omega and Battlefield stages, you pick ones that have absolutely banger music. Now, if you're training an amiibo whose character you're unfamiliar with, don't fret. 
Just fight against a simple CPU for a little bit to just get a feel for what moves you want to use. Or just go find an amiibo guide on a site like amiibodojo.com or other places where amiibo guides have been posted. Just remember, only use the moves you want your amiibo to use, and never use the moves you want them to avoid. If you don't want them using an up tilt that takes forever, then don't up tilt yourself. You're going to be teaching them bad habits. Additionally, if you don't want them using that up tilt, don't get hit by it, because otherwise you're rewarding bad behavior. You have to treat it like a pet. Now, it's easy to fall into old fighting habits when training amiibo, but that's something you got to fight against. For example, if you want your Simon amiibo to learn to use forward tilt, and he uses forward tilt on you, and that tilt sends you flying off stage, don't bother to recover. If you just let the move kill you, it's going to move the slider a lot more than if it just damages you. But this is something that's hard to do when you have, in some of our cases, decades worth of smash instincts telling you to recover. The more you fight amiibo though, the more you're going to cultivate these amiibo training instincts, so don't beat yourself up too much if you make mistakes from time to time. Now, at early levels, you're going to notice your amiibo making horrible recovery decisions, like, uh, uh, like this one. Don't panic, this isn't your fault. Remember what we said earlier, you aren't training the AI, you're just dealing with the AI that you have been given. At low levels, your amiibo has been given an AI that is dumber than a sack of hammers in a mud pit in February. And not even a particularly good sack either, like a threadbare one. Yes, they are very, very dumb. Additionally, if your amiibo has to use something other than up B for recovery, like say a Pikachu using side B to get more horizontal distance, or a Simon using their tether recovery, understand your amiibo will not do this at early levels. This is not something you have to panic about or try and train in them. The AI just isn't programmed to use them at low levels. You should see them start to do this on their own between levels 30 and 45. The AI has it in them. It's just waiting to bloom like a flower in spring. Just be patient. Now, a very common question we get. Can I teach my amiibo to do combos? The answer to that is, well, no, but actually yes. You can't truly train them to do combos, not really. Nothing like this anyway, because first of all, this is absolutely filthy and I need to take a shower after watching it. Secondly, remember, we only have 540 bytes to work with. Amiibos have sliders, not complex strings of moves they memorize. However, every character's AI has some pre-programmed combos that are just built in. You'll notice, for example, all Nessas have this fair jump fair combo that they can pull off. Now, you can try to work with these combos that are pre-programmed in. In the Ness example, you could try and get them to do the combo more by doing the fair jump fair combo yourself. That moves the sliders for fair up, and by doing this fair attack more often, it's likely going to trigger whatever pre-programmed combo is put in there more often. But what about combos that aren't pre-programmed? The rule of thumb for this is the longer the string of combos you're trying to teach, the less likely it is to occur. Let's say, for example, you want to teach your Dark Samus to do this down throw into fair combo. That is not a pre-programmed combo. However, if I keep doing it over and over and over again, the sliders for grab, down throw, and fair are all getting moved up. That means these moves will be used more often. Additionally, we're creating the correct spacing we're going to be needing these moves to occur at. That means the odds of the amiibo starting to do the combo increase because we have moved the slider for all three of these moves up. It's not guaranteed to work, sometimes it's just too complicated for the limited AI that amiibo have been given, but it's definitely worth the effort for simpler combos. If you think they're going to help your amiibo perform well in battle, give it a try. As your amiibo gains levels, they're going to become more and more competent and react faster and faster. I hear from a lot of people when the amiibo start getting into the 30s to 40s range, they complain that these amiibo are just too good and they can't really prevent the amiibo from learning bad habits because the amiibos react so fast that basically the amiibo can do whatever they want to them, it's gonna work, and thus they're going to learn the wrong lessons. Trust me, I get it. While I can definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my amiibo on my mains like Mario, Rob, and Samus, I can't do jack to them with characters I'm less comfortable with. Well, don't worry, because there's a couple of weapons that you can use to bypass this issue. The first technique is to simply not train them at these levels. 
you can just turn learning off at, say, levels 20 through 35, somewhere around there when the amiibo starts getting really competent. This is going to freeze your amiibo sliders in place, and you can just let the amiibo gain levels all the way up to 50 by just fighting AI. I know some trainers that have found this to be a very effective technique. I myself haven't found it to be as successful for me, but uh, trainers who have won a lot more than me have definitely used this to their success. At the same time, I also know some of the best trainers who train their amiibo all the way up to 50, so if that's the plan you want to go with, you have a second option. If you find your amiibo getting too uppity, go to Special Smash and turn on Slow Mode. This slows down the game speed about 50% and evens the reaction time between yourself and your amiibo. Another common complaint I hear is people bemoaning the fact that they aren't very good at using tilt attacks, which for certain characters can be a must. I hear that as well, because especially for side and up tilts, I struggle with those. I often end up just doing side smash or jumping because I think I may be the last person on the planet who still uses tap jump. Regardless, if you struggle with tilts, do remember that in the custom control section, you can actually make a profile that maps the C-stick to do tilt attacks instead of smash attacks. If I have a character that needs to be tilt attack heavy, I use my tilt attack profile so that I can tilt as much as I want and wow, I have said tilt a lot in this sentence. Now, when you get to level 50, it's time to No. It's time to test your amiibo. What? You thought once you got to level 50 you were done? Well, let me invoke some GI Joe and tell you that getting to level 50 is half of the battle. That is if you want your amiibo to get good anyway. You're going to need to see what your amiibo do against potential opponents. Until you see them in the heart of combat, you don't really know how well they're going to behave. Fighting against humans, it's a different story. You can do this by having it duel other amiibo that you own, submitting it to tournaments, or testing it in public arenas. You're likely going to be very surprised to see how your amiibo duels other amiibo in comparison to yourself. Just be sure before doing this that you turn learning off before it starts fighting another amiibo. You do not want it to pick up any bad habits. As you watch your amiibo fight, you're likely going to identify areas that need improvement. Don't sweat it. That's how amiibo do. Very rarely are your amiibo going to be perfect coming out of the oven. Once you're at 50, it's a never-ending cycle of test, train, test, then train, test, then train again, slowly dialing in your amiibo's behavior until you get it behaving exactly the way you want it to. I know some very dedicated trainers who have put dozens, if not hundreds of hours into fine-tuning a single amiibo into the perfect murder machine. Now, don't think that it's always required to put in that much work. I have seen fresh level 50s claim tournament victories, on occasion. Just know that the fun doesn't have to stop at 50. No matter how much you've trained your amiibo, the sliders can always be moved around. If you spot bad habits, you can usually fix it. Now, you probably noticed that I used the qualifying word, usually. There are three amiibo behaviors that have been proven to be very sticky bad habits. The three red flag behaviors that are consistent between all amiibo are jumping too much, dodging too much, and taunting too much. The reason they are so sticky is because despite the hard work of amiibo data miners, we haven't been able to determine what exactly it is that an amiibo sees as a successful jump, dodge, or taunt, so we aren't really sure what moves those sliders up. Even worse, we don't know what an amiibo sees as an unsuccessful jump, dodge, or taunt, so we don't have a reliable way to move those sliders down either. Before level 50, you can sometimes fix these things, but man, if they're still doing it at 50, I usually just reset the bin myself and start over because it feels to me like that's going to take less time to train it back up to 50 than it is to fix it. Additionally, certain amiibo have moves that if you kill them with them or get killed by them, the amiibo's never going to stop spamming them. Obviously, there's over 70 characters in the game now, so it would take forever to list them all. It's best beforehand to consult guides online to make sure which moves you should avoid before training your amiibo. So far, the biggest ones I've seen to avoid are Ganondorf's up tilt, Peach slash Daisy's down air, strangely the Ice Climber's up B, and for the love of Sakurai, Link's bombs. Link's bombs are a trap. 
Amiibo are very dumb dealing with these things. Just don't use them, because the Link AI will never heed Peppy's advice and... Use bombs wisely! I'm sure he's learned his lesson! Now, the best way to probably show off these training techniques would be to do some training myself, but uh, the video's already taking too long. So, not the next Amiibo video I do, but the one after that, I'm going to show myself training not only an Amiibo I've never trained, but a character I've literally never touched before. I recently bought a Chrom Amiibo, and I have to say, it's pretty swanky looking. Nintendo has really outdone themselves with the Amiibo design since Smash Ultimate. I figure this will be the best way to do it because it'll be showing someone that I have never played a single second of and will help dispel the notion that you have to be a good player to be a good amiibo trainer. So before we go, let's do a quick review of what you need to remember as you train your amiibo. One, you are not programming an AI, you are moving sliders around. Two, know the moves to employ and avoid before you train. Three, mirror match your amiibo. Four, let yourself die when your amiibo hits you with a move that you want it to learn. Five, avoid dodging, taunting, and being overly jumpy. Six, test your amiibo against other amiibo when they hit level 50. And seven, amiibo will keep learning after level 50, so the fun never has to stop. There is a huge community of amiibo trainers, so if you have any questions, Feel free to jump onto any of the various discords and ask for advice. You'll likely get a variety of different answers as everyone has their own opinions. Just remember, the technique that works for you personally is the technique you should use. Amiibo training is about executing on your training plan. So, if you find using one technique is better than another, go with it. After all, training Amiibo is supposed to be fun. With all that out of the way, it's uh, time for us to move on to the final of my Amiibo Basics videos. How do you actually enter these competitive amiibo tournaments. If you ask me, this is where the real fun of amiibo training starts, because this is when you actually start interacting with the amiibo community. And no matter the format, there's always a lot of fun and laughs to be had. If you found this video helpful, do please give it a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm gets its daily requisite sacrifice of thumbs that it needs apparently to let you know that you like things. And hey, you can just come join us whenever you want to find out more Amiibo information on twitch.tv slash splicestream. We stream Amiibo tournaments every Monday through Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back with the news you can use on how to join the wide plethora of Amiibo tournaments that are out there on our next video. But until next time, I hope you all will stay fit, keep sharp, and make good decisions. Splice, out. <laughs>